the time has finally come today you make your first screen in figma in this video i'll talk about the basics of figma and i'll try to design a random app and as i do this i'll talk about all the features of figma that you need to get started within 30 minutes you're going to be designing so this is an exciting video let's get started to give you a little background about what figma is figma is a screen design tool it's an interface design tool for mac for windows so it's web based it also has apps that you can use on your computer uh, but what you can do is you can create screens you can prototype you can collaborate with teams you can leave comments you can share feedback and you can even use it for handoff when you're working with developers so check this out this is what it is i talked about this in a previous video but the reason i'm talking about figma in this course rather than something like sketch adobe xd or photoshop is that figma is like compared to sketch it's at parity and has more features in fact than sketch does uh, it works on all platforms and design teams all over the world are switching to figma so learning figma you're ahead of the curve the reason i'm doing figma over xd is xd is just not ready for real products so as of making this video xd is missing a lot of things that you will need to make a decently sized app so while you can definitely go check it out and you know learning any one of these tools sketch xd or figma makes it super easy to use the others because they're all pretty similar in some ways all right so let's get into it this is the interface when you open a new file in figma so What you can see is there's a panel on the left, uh, there's another panel on the right, and in the center here you have an infinite canvas. This goes on for as long as you want. When you open a file, when you want to start designing, the first thing you do is you create a frame. Now you can either do this or you can just press the F key. And what happens on the right here is it asks you what device you're designing for. So you've got phones, you've got tablets, desktop, Apple Watch. paper if you're making something for print and it even has a few templates for social media i'm just going to go ahead and choose the iphone x it appears on the left here as well now i can change this to whatever name i want like home screen for now i'm just going to leave this as iphone x all right so you have a blank canvas here what do you do to get started now i'm going to pick a random app to sort of design and in the process I'll show you what the different features Figma has. So I went to this site called App Idea Generator. Let's see. Let's shuffle a couple times. Cooking app for discovering cities. Cooking app for discovering cities. How do I do that? You come in and you say you want to explore by cuisine. Maybe there's a map. Let's see a few more. A calculator. No. <laughs> a notes app for online shopping. Calculator for recording meetings. Yeah, this could work, but not a calculator, but just a app to record meetings. Okay, I think we should do this. Uh, let's give this a name. What are we gonna call this app? An app for recording meetings. What I just did here is I pressed T, and T is the type tool. It's up here. You can just click anywhere on the canvas, and you can start typing. I'm just gonna do that again. What should we call this? Meeting. Meet. Meet. Oh. on this kind of way this if you notice is happening outside the artboard these are just some notes i'm taking to get started so the first screen that i want to design is a splash screen this is when i first open the app it shows me the logo and it says meeto so maybe i'll call this one splash screen now what i normally do is i name my artboard and i usually put a number there so it sort of shows the flow as well so let's just lay out what our screens are going to be and if you watched my previous video on design process <laughs> this is not how it works this is not you just don't immediately start in the tool but the purpose of this video is just to explain figma so i'm going to do it this way typically you would start with some research find other apps that do something similar you would start with information architecture laying out what the app should feel like then you would do wireframing you would start drawing it on paper and only then would you come to the tool uh, but i'm just going to do it here for the purpose of this video so i have a splash screen Uh, let's skip logins for this. Second screen can be a uh, my meetings. This can be maybe a list of all the meetings I've created. 
and this should probably have a button which lets you create a new meeting. So I think let's just start with this. You click an artboard and now you're ready. And when you do this, you notice this right panel here changes. This right panel in Figma is where all of the editing happens. This is what you will be using to create more stuff. Let's say I just wanted to create something really quick right now. What I would do is I'd go here, use the rectangle tool, which is R. Let's say I want to draw an app bar on top here. Uh, what size should this be? I'm just going to keep it random for now, but I'll talk about how you figure things like that out. Now, as I created that, you notice there's a new layer that's been created. So this panel on the left is actually the layers panel. It holds all your frames and then within each frame, it shows you what layers you made. So let's say I want to now add some text here. It says Mido. You see, as I move this, this sort of shows me these red lines. Uh, these are alignment lines that Figma uses to show you where you're placing something. This can be really useful when you're moving things around. So now I have a, maybe a list item here for meeting. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe put something like that. Write some text. Design review Monday. Let's say this is the name of the meeting. And you know, at this point you might be wondering what the fuck is this guy doing? Like this looks like shit. But Trust me, I'm just I'm just laying stuff out so I know what to design once I get started. This was taken yesterday, recorded yesterday, and you see this thing I did here. What I did was duplicated this layer. You either hold this down, press the Option or Alt key, and just drag it out. That duplicates it, or you can do Command D as well. That duplicates it as well. Um, don't worry if you're thinking about what the shortcuts are. Just right here, you can see all the shortcuts that you will need. So, it's all good. Um, no need to feel intimidated right now. All right, so Design Review Monday. Maybe I recorded this yesterday and maybe it was a 24 minute meeting. 24, 12. Okay, and let's say this is my list type. So now what I'm gonna do is, you see, I'm gonna select these layers as I do that, the relevant layer gets selected on left. And I'm going to do a command G. What command G does is it creates a group. And this group contains the layers that I just selected. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and create two more, right? Here we have this app. It's uh, looking pretty shit, but um, hopefully you got some idea of Figma now. And I'm going to just remove the splash screen for now. Let's just do this screen. Now, you want to add a status bar to the top. If you've seen an iPhone X, it has a status bar. How do you how do you do that? You're not going to recreate it. So the trick to that is you have templates that are used, um, whether you're designing for Android or you're designing for iOS. And these templates contain the standard elements that you might need to make an app. All right. So I've opened this up. These screens here are fully editable. Like this is a massive, massive Figma file. As you can see you have all of these here. Now, now there's no need to be intimidated by this. This is a huge file. Um, and it's organized really, really well. So you might have some difficulty sort of understanding it. But I would suggest going into this and trying to break down what's happening. Now, to give you a little story, the way I got started in design, I would take apps. Now, actually, I started with websites. So I would take a website. I would take a screenshot of it. And then I would try recreating it in Photoshop. And that's what we used back then. So what I'm now gonna do is, you just saw what I did. Uh, I went into this here. I selected this frame. I did a Command C, Command V. Just copy pasted this into my file. Now I'm gonna use this as reference. So one of the first things I need is this status bar on the top. And I'm just gonna copy and paste it onto my own artboard. Now you see it pasted somewhere in the center. Now if I want to take it to the top, I can either just drag it like this, or another thing I can do is I can use these alignment options on the top. Right. This is what it does. So clicking this left aligns it to the left of your frame. This is center, this is right, and this is top. Now, what I'm going to do is this height, I don't really know what it should be, but I'm just going to copy what this is. This is a height of 120. I'm gonna do that. Now if I wanna nudge this, what I can do, I can just use my keys, my arrow keys, or I can just use my, now I'm gonna change this style to something 
I don't know what I should change it to. Uh, but this is not the best way to browse fonts. If you're looking for fonts, you know, I'll cover this in a future video, but fonts.google.com is the best place. Uh, you can easily browse fonts and you can also type in your word and see what it looks like. What, what would I want to use? Balu Bhaijan. So Figma by default loads all Google fonts within here. So which makes it very easy. You don't really need to go here, click this, download and all of that stuff. All right, so I'm gonna change this style now. I'm gonna make it maybe 16. Info. I'm gonna style this. So now this rectangle here, I wanna style it to be different color. Now, of course, I don't even know what my brand colors are gonna be. This is just something I'm making up on this part. Maybe something like this looks cool. I could change this text to white. Now you see what I'm doing here is I'm selecting layers and then I'm going on the right here and I'm manipulating their styles. And a lot of UI design, that's what it's about. It's about knowing what styles to apply and developing an intuition for how you should style certain things. This color picker here is something you will see very often. You'll use it very often. Uh, on yours, it might be on RGB, but uh, I use HSB values and I'll talk about this in a future video about picking colors. So you notice when I'm on HSB, this number is the only thing that changes when I do this. Saturation is the y-axis and saturation is, sorry, sorry, the x-axis and brightness is the y-axis. That's what HSB stands for, hue, saturation and bright. So let's see, I'm gonna sort of like this, seems interesting. App bar seems too big though. I'm just gonna take a call, make this 90. And how do I know this is good? How do I know what this is actually gonna look like on my phone? So Figma has something called Figma Mirror. I'll talk about that once we sort of designed this to see how you can figure out what your app looks like and real time see changes on your phone. Now, these list items, let me just align them here. And Figma also has something where you can just use these handles to change the spacing between your items. This is super useful and you are not gonna find this in Sketch or XD. So firstly, I want my app bar to be white. Let me see if I can pick up a white app bar from here. Yep, that looks good. I'm sorry, a white status bar. That's what I want. Now what I want with these list items is I wanna be able to listen to them uh, because they're old meeting items and I want to be able to create a new one when I need to. So for creating, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a button at the bottom here. For now, I'll just keep it very shitty looking so I can lay my ideas out. But just some sort of create action at the bottom there. Now, <laughs> keep in mind that I'm doing this completely impromptu. Like I had no idea what I was going to design, so I haven't had any time to plan it out. This is just something I'm <laughs> doing on the go and hoping it turns out all right. Okay, so what I want the circle to be is actually a play icon. When I tap it, it just starts playing right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a fill to it. Now, you know, it's become white here. Let me change the background of my frame. I can do that by clicking on this name here and going into background. So I want it to be like a, a light gray. Um, you see when I go into a certain amount of gray, it sort of blends with my background. What I'm gonna do is, when I have nothing selected, this background here applies to the whole canvas. So I'm actually gonna change my canvas right now to dark mode. And what I mean by that is just changing the color here. Uh, I think this background is a little too dark, maybe a little lighter. This is gonna be a play button. So I wanna sort of triangle in this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the shape tools here. I didn't explain this, but the same way that we do rectangles, you can draw an ellipse, you can draw any shape you want. I'm gonna select this polygon here. I'm gonna draw a triangle. I'm gonna use this angle thing here to rotate it. Now I can either directly enter a value or I can just click this icon here and just turn it around. Minus 90. Change the shape a little and I'm gonna apply some border radius. I'm gonna say maybe 4 pixels. That's too much. 2 pixels. 1.5. Yeah, maybe 1.5 is okay. I'm just gonna visually just align this. So now I want this text, which is the name of the meeting. So I'm just gonna press T. I'm gonna call this design review. In your recording, it might seem like my Figma is sort of lagging. That's not really true. It's because I have a recording going on. So I'm recording my face as well as the screen. My computer is just like overheating right now. I'm doing this on a 13 inch MacBook. 
One thing you might notice is when I created this text layer, it got placed into this group. As you're designing, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on your layers panel to make sure everything is sort of neatly arranged. Now if you notice here, this is called group, group, group. This is status bar. Now this is obviously not good practice. Uh, every once in a while, it can help to just clean up your frames. And the way you do this is top to bottom, left to right. So status bar on top, then I have my tangle name. Maybe I want to create a group, this name. I'm just gonna command select all of these and just either group selection or just use command G. So now I have this text and I need to style it. I need to pick a typeface, weight, uh, the size, and a bunch of other properties. Uh, so for this, I'm gonna be going with the system font, which is SF Pro. I'm gonna change this to maybe new bold. What size should I keep? So typically, if you look at the guidelines for Android and iOS, the minimum text size you should use is around 10, but a better idea is to keep 12. I'm gonna keep this a little bigger. I'm gonna keep it maybe 14, and uh, regular is fine, actually. I don't want this to be pure black. I want it to be sort of like dark gray. Uh, I'm gonna style this icon here. Now I want to make this the same blue as before. So what I'm gonna do use is the color picker tool and say okay, blue. And this I'm gonna I wanna give it an outline. So I'm gonna use the stroke tool here and say but I want this to be maybe a little more subtle, maybe like a 10% opacity. Now in terms of hierarchy, this is my title and this is a subtext to this. So typically what you would do is this it would be lower emphasis and the ways you can do this is course by size you can do this by weight or you can also do this by color now this is looking a little better but it's <laughs> it's still pretty shitty now if you see i'm trying to figure out what my spacing should be so normally to keep consistency it's a good idea to keep your spacing a multiple of a single number so i'm going to keep everything a multiple of eight um changing the spacing center aligning it from the edge i want to keep this 16 now i'm just going to delete our old versions that we created here now I want to duplicate this and let's say I created a group turn, I accidentally aligned it and I just wasn't paying attention and maybe I just put it like this. And I want to clean these up. We have to do that is select these. I'm going to use this thing that shows up. And when I do that, equi aligns all of this. Let's style this bottom thing here right now. I'm going to select the ellipse. I want this to not be blue. I want this to be something that stands out with blue. I'm going to use something closer to orange. I'm going to use a complementary color. What complementary colors are, I'm going to cover it in the future. But just to give you some basic idea, when you look at a color wheel, you have these colors sort of laid out. Uh, complementary colors are those that are opposites to each other and they usually go well together. With blue, I would want something in this range to be complementary to it. I think this looks decent. I'm going to take this plus and delete it actually. Also want to give this yellow button a bit of a shadow. So I'm going to go into effects. The effects you can apply here are drop shadow. There's an inner shadow, which I don't need, of course. There's a blur. I'm going to change this to drop shadow. And I'm going to just sort of eyeball this. I'm going to talk about this in the lighting chapter. But I just want the shadow to be under the button. So assuming that the light source is on top. X, you want to keep it to zero, maybe four. Reduce the blur a little and make it a lighter color. One thing you might have sort of realized as you watch me do this is I do a lot of just like guesswork, right? That's what it might seem like. So you might see me going in and changing something and then changing it back and it sort of feels indecisive. Now, one of the things about design, and this is a technique that you will need to use, is knowing what a good range of possibilities is. So two things I'm going to talk about is firstly, whenever you make changes, it's good to maintain all your previous logs. When you make a change that you think is going to change things a lot. So what I did here is I duplicated this artboard. And now I'm going to try something which is, I'm going to take just this item, right? I'm going to say, how big can this be? 18. Is that too big? I think it looks okay. Like I could have actually gone with 18. I'm gonna keep that distance 14. Not bad. Like this looks pretty decent as well. In fact, I would say this looks kind of better than the previous one. The previous one might be hard to read. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download the Figma mirror app. I'm gonna mirror this design on my phone to see what it looks like. All right, this is what it looks like. And I don't think this is too bad. Like it looks pretty decent. And this is the small size. And I think the small size is too small. As a designer, you need to experiment with what are the, the different 
possibilities that you can use so 18 is okay but what about 24 right this is too big like let's say this was a longer title this would overflow into two lines what about 20 maybe this works maybe this gets too long once there's once this goes into two lines what about something smaller what about what about size 14 now this is too small so this way every single thing that you do every single item try a lot of different styles and try to understand is this an acceptable style does this look good or does this look bad eventually you will start developing an intuition for a range of values so you you will be like typically for titles somewhere around 16 is good or when using colors something like this is good when using shadows this is a good practice and with this you develop you start developing your own rules so that the next time you do it it becomes much easier for you to do it because you already remember what worked last time one thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go in here and i'm also gonna create a state for when i start playing it so like a pause button i'm gonna hide the triangle here so instead of deleting it i'm just gonna hide the layer in case i need to bring it back later this is probably too tall make this shorter hmm the way i'm bringing these rulers up is i'm pressing down the alt key what i'm also going to do is when it's a selected state i'm going to change this to blue and i'm going to change this to a playback time probably not the best way to do it but uh, just going for something quick here and maybe when i do this the whole item gets selected so maybe a sort of area at the back i'm gonna move this layer in the right position i'm gonna make sure holding down the alt key to see the spacing seven and eight and i'm gonna change this to be very subtle so just like that i want to see what this looks like on my phone so i'm gonna mirror this another cool effect that i think might be interesting is i'm gonna select this i'm gonna add a ripple effect when i'm playing this the circle has a ripple behind it that sort of pulsates and shows me what's playing so I'm going to just create a circle I'm going to move it into the right group. Now this is super important because your files can become a mess if you are not conscious of where things are being placed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create one of these. I actually like that. It uh, looks like a glow behind the button and looks kind of interesting. I'm going to make it a little subtle though. I'm going to see what that looks like. Those are the basics of Figma. With this knowledge, you can go and get started with actually designing an app. One of the things that helped me practice was I would take screenshots. So let's say I really like Pinterest's design and then I want to take a screenshot of this and see what makes it work. What I would actually do, I would try to recreate this design, turned down the opacity of this to like 10 bucks. You know, back in school, you would trace stuff. You would sort of find something and you would try to copy it by tracing. That's a technique that works with design as well. And it's a great way to practice. So find an app that you like, just try recreating it in Figma. I can see there's a search bar here and it's a rounded search bar. So let's see. I'm going to guess what this value is. Is it 4? Is it 8? Uh, yeah, I think it's 8. And I'm going to align that up to the pixel level. Then there's an icon here. Can I redraw this icon? I'm going to take a circle and put it here and I'm going to draw a triangle. Now your goal with this should be to try recreating it to your best ability because manipulating the tool that way gives you a lot of experience in understanding what are the capabilities, what are the different things that are just possible. In terms of icons, you can of course draw custom icons, but I would say to start off with, just use icon sets and you can of course Google them or a lot of icons are included in the Google material design kit.
After this video, after you've watched it, go pick up an app that you like and try recreating it. And once you have done this with a few apps and are comfortable doing it, try applying this to a hypothetical app. So go to appideagenerator.com, find something that seems interesting and try designing a screen for it. Now, I'm gonna share the link to this Figma file in the comments if you actually wanna go in and check it out. And if you want feedback on this, feel free to join the WhatsApp group for this course. There's a link in the description where you can fill out the form and I'll add you to it. You can discuss with other designers, you can share screenshots if you're feeling proud of the work you've done. And you can also ask me questions if something seems amiss to you. That's all I'm going to talk about for this video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you now have an idea of what Figma is. And today is when you design your first screen. See you.